Hi, in this video, we are going to take a look at the Google Cloud Platform, also called GCP, to create a compute instance VM to run Dockerized applications. To do that, we will use the GCP UI to create a so-called GCP project and enable a couple of services, starting with the identity and access management to create a so-called service account. Then we'll use the container registry to store Docker images on Google Cloud Storage. We will use Compute Engine to spin up a virtual machine to actually run the application. And we will also use the secret manager to store and retrieve secrets. The flow or the process looks like this. We will first create a service account with an access key that is basically just a JSON file that we download on our local host system. From there, we can use it to authenticate Docker uh, to um, push images to the container registry. They are stored on Google Cloud Storage. We will also use the key file to authenticate a tool called gcloud CLI, which is the official CLI from the Google Cloud Platform. We will use that to log into um, our compute instance VM via SSH uh, using a technology called IAP. From there, we will pull images from the registry and we will also retrieve secrets from the secret manager. To get started, we will create a new project. Projects must be globally unique. So we can call our project anything we like, for example, our Docker tutorial, that will create a corresponding project ID and that ID has to be globally unique. So for example, if I would just use the name Docker, then I couldn't create that project because the ID is already taken by somebody else. So in our case, I will simply choose the name our Docker tutorial and create the project. Once the project is created, um, I've navigated to the corresponding services. So starting with the container registry, because I'm going to take a look at that later as well, I'm going to pin it to the top of the navigation for easier access. Now, when I try to access the product, Google will check if I have enabled the corresponding API. Since this is a brand new project, this hasn't happened yet, so I need to manually enable the API once. We also need to do that for a couple of other services, for example, the compute engine. So I'm going to do that here as well. And finally, also for the secret manager, which is under security, secret manager, and also needs to be activated. All right, apart from those services, I also need um, the IAM system, and I will also need Google Cloud Storage. So I'm gonna pin that as well. While the APIs are activating, we are going to create our service account. So for that, head over to IAM and then service accounts. And from here, we will create a new service account. We can give it any name we want. Uh, in our case, we will just name it our deployment service account. And the ID, we will simply use deployment as service account ID. Don't need a description. And that's it. That's all we need. And in order to use that source account, we need to create key files. So we'll head over to manage keys for that service account, create a new key uh, in JSON format that will be offered as a download. I will copy that key in our code base and I will also rename it to GCP service account key.json. And now I need to use this service account to authenticate Docker. That is being done by basically getting the contents of the key and piping it to Docker login with the special user underscore JSON underscore key for registry gcr.io. So that's the official registry of Google Cloud. All right, let's build a Docker image. To keep it simple, I've chosen to just create a super slim Nginx image that adds one new file called hello.html that will simply show hello world. I'm going to start the container and then we can take a look on our local host for hello.html and we see that we actually see the content of the file that we expect. To push this image that we just built to the Docker registry, we would like to run Docker push on our image. But uh, this is not quite behaving as you would expect to because it will push or it will try to push the image to docker.io. That is the official registry from Docker. That's of course not correct because we want to push to our own registry and our own registry lives at gcr.io and then the name of our project. So in our case, 
our Docker tutorial. In order to push the image to that registry, we need to rename it or we need to tag it accordingly. That works by using Docker tag, name of the image, so my engine X, and then new name of the image or alternative name of the image. So we're gonna prefix our image with the registry that we wanna push it to. gcr.io slash our Docker tutorial slash my engine X. And now we're gonna use this full name to push the Docker image. So we're gonna run Docker push. Um, it's actually pushing it to the, to the correct registry, but we get an error message um, that says, the caller doesn't have permission, storage buckets create, that would be required in order to store the images. The service account that we created currently doesn't have any permissions at all. So in order to make the pushing work, we need to um, assign our service account a role that enables him to create storage buckets. So I'm heading over to IAM. And now I need to define roles for the user of the service account. The first question is, well, what is the user of the service account? In IAM, permissions are created based on email addresses. So you can see my private email address here. So in order to find the user, we can take a look at the service account key file because in here we find the client email address that consists of the service account ID that we have given when we created a service account, the project ID, and then iam.gserviceaccount.com. So this is basically standard. This is the email address that we now need to use in the IAM permission interface. So we can use this email address, and now we can assign the role that provides the permission that is required. So in this case, the role that we want to give is the storage admin role. If we now try to push the image, it should work as expected. We can verify that by taking a look at the container registry, changing back to the interface, taking a look at the container registry. We can now see that the myenginex image actually exists here. We can also take a look at cloud storage. In this case, we can see that a bucket was created, artifacts.ourdockertutorial.fspot.com. In here, we will find the layers of the image. Now we need to create a virtual machine. This is being done through the compute engine interface. We just click create instance. We first need to give it a name. Let's just name it test instance choose a machine type. So basically how much power the machine is going to have. I'm taking the smallest machine so that the costs stay like as little as possible. I will use a, a Debian operating system. I choose the correct service account, the one that we just created to be deployed on the virtual machine when it starts. Allow HTTP traffic. And then we're going to do some tweaks here. We're going to upload uh, an SSH key because I want to show you how to log into a machine via SSH. So for that, you need your own SSH key. I need to add them here as an SSH key to be deployed on the machine. I have created a corresponding SSH key pair. The user of that key is defined at the very end. I can change that to, for example, hello. And this will be the name of the user that I need to use later to connect via SSH to the compute instance. Enter it um, in the corresponding field. And then there's one more thing that is changing the uh, provisioning model from standard to spot. It will now get a lot cheaper. And the reason here is that um, spot instances can in theory be terminated at any point in time by Google. So you don't have any guarantees that the instance will keep running. But yeah, for that you get also a big discount. Once everything is configured, I am hitting the create button and this will create the compute instance and we'll spin it up. All right, our instance is up and running. Before we move on, I wanna quickly point out that not only the instance has been created, but also a corresponding firewall rule that will allow HTTP traffic. So when I ticked the allow HTTP checkbox, that created a firewall rule that is called default allow HTTP. And this rule will apply to all instances that are tagged with the tag HTTP server. And this HTTP server tag has also been added to the instance that we just created. 
And because of that, the corresponding firewall rule was also added to the image. We can do that when we take a look at the network details, um, because here in the firewall rules, we can now see that this default allow HTTP was actually added as a rule to the instance. The instance is now up and running, but nothing is on that instance yet. If I would try to access the IP address, nothing would happen. The connection is not possible because nothing is receiving connections yet. So now we need to somehow deploy our Nginx Docker container on that instance. We need to first understand how we can log into the instance to install Docker and start a container. There are multiple ways that Google offers to connect to an instance. The easiest one directly from the interface is this SSH button right here. So if I click on the button, um, a web shell will be spawned. Some ephemeral SSH keys will be created under the hood, transferred to the virtual machine, and then I get access to the instance through a web shell. I'm now on the instance and I would now be able to run commands. The second option is using SSH. So because we transferred our SSH keys to the compute instance, we are now able to log in via SSH. I need to use the correct username and the IP address of the instance. I am now also connected as I was before. And then there's a third option that Google offers through the gCloud CLI. We've already seen that at the beginning of the video. That's the official CLI tool by the Google Cloud Platform. And I've already installed that locally on my machine. So when I run gCloud version, we can see that I'm currently running the tool in version 380. The first thing to do here is activating the service account that we have downloaded previously. Just to recap, we have stored that under GCP service account key.json. And I have now activated that service account for the gCloud CLI tool. And once we have done that, I can run the command gCloud compute SSH, name of the instance, name of the uh, instance that we just created, the availability zone, and then we use the flag tunnel through IAP. This will enable a technique called IAP, identity aware proxy. Through that, we can connect to the instance. But in order to make this work, we need to add a couple of more permissions to the service account. In this case, command fails because it misses the permissions compute instance get. We already know how to enable permissions. So we need to head back to the IAM permission overview to modify the roles of the service account. The thing that was complained about is compute engine permissions. We will simply use the compute admin role here that has all the necessary permissions. So we're gonna save that and we will try again to log in. A spoiler, this will fail again. The next thing that's gonna happen is that the command will create new SSH keys on my machine and it will transfer those SSH keys to the machine. But our service account needs access to the service account that is deployed on the virtual machine. That's kinda unintuitive because we've authenticated the service account that is also deployed on the compute instance, but Google still complains about it because we need a new role for that, a service account user. Once again, we will head back to the IAM permission interface at this new role here as well. Try again. We will get a little further, but it will still fail. Fatal error, remote site, unexpectedly closed network connection. This one is a little bit more complicated because Google doesn't really tell us what's going on, but we are missing one last role in order to make it work. Once again, we need to head back to the IAM permission interface and we need to add the IAP secured tunnel user role. Now everything should work as expected. We try it once again. And now it seems to be finally working. Because I'm on Windows, the default behavior is to start um, a PuTTY session to connect to the instance via SSH. And now I'm finally logged into the instance and can, can run commands on it. The next thing to do is install Docker. For that, let's head over to the official installation instructions of Docker for Debian and simply execute everything that we see here. I've already prepared a script that will set up Docker on the instance. Once installation is finished, I can check via docker ps 
But since I am just a normal user, I don't have to require permissions. So I'm changing to the root user via sudo i. That's natively possible on all Google Cloud instances. Try the same thing again, and now it works as expected. The next thing to do is pulling the image that we pushed previously. So I'm running docker pull gcrio, but that won't work as well because I'm not authenticated to retrieve images from the registry locally. I was using the key file that I've downloaded previously. I do not have that key file available on the VM, but each VM comes pre-configured with the gcloud tool. And it is already authenticated with the service account that I attached to the VM when we created it. So in this case, it's the deployment at our Docker tutorial IAMG service account. Because of that, we can run the following command, gcloud auth configure docker. Let's try again to pull the image. So now that we have the image, we need to start it the same way as we did locally. Docker run, map the port 80 of the instance to the Docker container, and then use the image name that we've just pulled. Now we should be able to refresh our browser with the public IP address, and we see the default Nginx welcome page, but we should also be able to see our hello.html file that we have baked into the image. So this proves that this is actually our image. Now there's one more thing that I would like to show that we don't strictly need to run dockerized applications, but that are super helpful and we will need that in a later tutorial, the secret manager. We've also enabled the corresponding API previously, so we can immediately create a secret and we'll just name it my secret and I will give it the value my secret value. Create the secret, can take um, can take a look at it, my secret value. And now I want to retrieve that secret on the virtual machine. Corresponding command is gcloud secrets versions access latest and then the name of the secret. But that won't work quite yet because we require the unnecessary permissions for that. So in this case, secret manager versions access. Let's head over to the IAM settings and then assign the role of the secret manager admin to our service account. And once this change has propagated through the system, we should be able to run the corresponding command. It actually worked as expected and we can see the my secret value that we've stored in the secret manager previously. And that's it. Those are all the necessary pieces in order to deploy a dockerized application on a Google Cloud instance and actually run it. In the next part, we will do the exact same thing but we will run all commands not through the UI, but through the gcloud CLI. So we will make use of the command line to spin up all the resources. Before we get there, we will do a little cleanup to delete a project. Open the settings tab. You need to click the shutdown button and then enter the project ID and then click shutdown to shut down the project. And this will now delete all the resources that we have created so that you won't be built for them. You can find a much more detailed version of this video on my blog under pascalando.com, GCP Compute Instance VM Docker. You'll find the link also in the description. All files are available in the official Docker PHP tutorial repository on GitHub under part 8. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.